Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn how to build nice looking Excel reports with navigation features. We will set up the navigation links which the user can click to navigate to particular sheets in the report. We will also set up a go back button which the user can click to navigate back to the main menu. It will be a lot of fun and I'll see you there. Sometimes your Excel files might get too big and may consist of several sheets. In this case, it will be helpful if you can set up a navigation page for ease of access and better user experience. Let's take an example of this file. This file has seven sheets in total. It has PL balance sheet and some other reports, and then it has one sheet which is called main menu. In its current form, the file is very difficult to navigate. The user can easily get lost when trying to look for a particular sheet. To make the file more accessible, we can set up links on our summary page to individual pages in the report. So let's start building our links. I will first copy the cell here, call it links, and I will call it click here. To set up the link, I will go to the cell where I want the link to be and right click on that cell. Then I'll go to the link option and click on insert link. Once I click on insert link, I will get this dialog box. This dialog box shows me different options. I can actually set, a, set up a link to an external web page. I can set a link to a place in this document, or I can actually set up a link that generates an email as well. In this example, we want to set up the link to a place in this document. So I will select that. I will select the sheet PNL because we want this link to go to PNL. And within that sheet, we want the link to take us to cell A1. Um, this is the text to display, so I'll keep it, at, uh, keep it as click here. And we can add a screen tip as well. So let me just add to go to PNL. Let's click on OK and then OK. Note that the formatting has changed a little bit, but we will fix that later. Now let's test our link out. So if I hover my mouse on top of the link, it gives me the screen tip, which says click here to go to PNL. That's what we had entered. And if I click on this link, it will take me to the cell A1 of the PNL sheet. Now if a user wants to go back to the main menu, he or she will need to do that manually. To improve the navigation of our file, it will make sense to include a go back button uh, somewhere here at the top. For now, I will go back to the main menu manually. However, we will set up that go back button later on in the later on in this video so let's go back to our main menu similar to the pnl sheet i will now set up the links for the other sheets since you already know how to set up the links you might want to fast forward the video for a few seconds over here so i'm done setting up the links let's check out some of the links to make sure they are working properly so let's click on the cash flow and it takes us to the cash flow report. If I go back and click on the financial report, it takes us to, sorry, it's named incorrectly. It is management report. So if I click on this one, it takes us to the management report. If I click on dashboard, it takes us to the dashboard. Now, as you can see, not having the go back to or go back button makes it difficult for the user to navigate, especially in case if your Excel workbook has 10, 20 sheets, navigating all the way back or actually even finding the main menu sheet might be very difficult. Therefore, let's set up the main menu button over here. I will type main menu here. And similar to what we did before, I will create a link here and I will link it to the main menu sheet. And this time, let's say we want to go to cell B3. I'll put a screen tip as well. Click here to go back to menu. So I already see the pop-up. Click here to go back to menu. And let me do the formatting as well right away. I'll just copy the formatting from this cell. Paste it as formats. And maybe do the same coloring as well. Okay, so now let's check out our main menu. 
and it works. Let's go back to the PL sheet once more. Over here, we do not have the main menu button, so which means we'll need to add it. But how should we add it? Should we add it manually like we did it on the dashboard sheet? That will be really time consuming, especially considering if, if your workbook has, let's say, 10, 20, or 30 sheets. So in order to do that in one go, what I can do is I'll go to my dashboard sheet. I will copy the cell in which my hyperlink lies. Then I will select all the sheets where I want to paste the hyperlink. Also, I'll need to make sure that I'm pasting in the right uh, spot. So it's in cell B2. So I'll go to all the other sheets. I'll select all the sheets. I'll hold the shift key. And then I will paste it in the cell B2. And then I can go to some other sheet and navigate back to the main menu. Let's go to any of the links and it's working. Let's try one more. This one is also working. As the next step, we need to optimize our worksheet and the process of building this entire workbook. In the first part of the video, we set up links for individual sheets over here one by one. And it was easy to do that in this particular case because we have hardly six sheets. But imagine if we had 30 to 40 sheets, then it would be really time consuming. So we need to figure out a way to set up the links for each of these sheets in a more automated way. To optimize the process, we can use the hyperlink formula. The hyperlink formula takes in two arguments. It's asking first for the link location, that is, the location where we want the link to go. And then secondly, it's asking for the description that we want to appear. For the link location for now, I will just give it an empty cell. And for the second argument, I will keep the same description as we have in these buttons, that is click here. Note that although a cell has appeared which shows up as a link, however, it will not work because we haven't provided the link location as of yet. Now, when it comes to link location, links are of various different types. If we are passing a link to a website, we will just put in that website's link. However, in our case, we want it to link to a different sheet within the same Excel file. In this case, we will need to write in the sheet name followed by the cell where we want the link to go, which is cell A1. And all of this should be followed by a hash sign. So hash sign, sheet name, exclamation mark, and then the cell reference. Now, if I click on this one, it will take us to the PNL. So this means that I need to add this type of link to all the cells over here, or as many sheets as I have. And if I drag the formula down, it will take us to those locations. Now, typing in the sheet references or sheet links in this format is also not very efficient. So here we can use the concatenate formula. I will use the concatenate formula here. I will write the hash sign first, then the name of the sheet, followed by an exclamation mark and cell A1. Now, when I drag this formula down, and of course, in case if you have a bigger workbook, you have uh, a lot more sheets, you'll drag all the way down. So let's try these out. Do you think that the formulas will work? Let's try them out. And it doesn't. So why is it not working? The reason why it's not working is because if you open the cell, we see that all of these other sheets have a space in their name. And you might already know that if you have a sheet which has a space in the name, and if you're referring to that sheet via formula, you need to enclose the name of the sheet in apostrophes. So let's do that within our concatenate formula. I will just before the sheet name, I will add one more comma, and then I will put an apostrophe within the quotation mark. Similarly, after the sheet name, I'll put in another comma and close the name of the sheet within another apostrophe. I'll do that. I'll do the same thing for all the sheets. And I can even do that for the PNL sheet as well. It doesn't harm. Now let's try if our formulas are working. So balance sheet is working. Go back to the main menu. Let's try management report. It's also working. Go back to the main menu. PNL is also working. And we go back to the main menu. 
So although we have come a long way, there is still one more area where we can optimize our setup. Can you guess that? Let me show you by way of an example. Let, let's just say that someone goes and changes the name of the sheet to, let's say, profit. If you go back to the main menu and try to click here, it will say reference is invalid. <clears throat> this is because the link over here is actually looking for a PNL sheet, but after the name was changed, the PNL sheet doesn't exist. The PNL sheet has now become the profit sheet. This means that in order to make our setup completely error free, we need to make the names of the sheets over here completely dynamic. By dynamic, I mean that if someone changes the name of the sheet over here, the name over here also changes. So how can we do that? We can do that via a combination of, a, of two formulas. Our first formula is the cell formula and then the other form formula is the text after. So what does the self formula or self function do? The self function will return the information about the formatting, location, and contents of the first cell, or basically it will give you the file location or location of the first cell in a file, uh, and it will give you the full path. Let's just try it out. So if I write the self formula and if I select the file name, and then let's say I will give it a link to cell A1, it will give me the full location of this file. I'm editing or kind of covering up some part of the path, however, uh, because it contains my username and all that kind of information, but I hope you got the point. If you see the full path that this, uh, this formula has provided, in the end of this full path is the sheet name, and this is what we are looking for. To grab the sheet name, I will use the function called text after. The text after function basically returns a text after a particular delimiting characters, in which case I, am, I can see that the sheet name is after a closing square bracket. So I can pass that in. So if I write the text, text after function, if I pass in this particular link or path that I've got, and then I specify that my delimiter is closing a square bracket, then it will give me the sheet name. Alternatively, what I can do is I can write the cell formula right within this function itself. So I'll write file name here, and we're looking for cell A1, and then it will give me the name of the sheet. So I can now delete this one, and still I have the name of the sheet here. So in order to keep the names of all the sheets dynamic, I will paste this formula somewhere over here and I'll link it to various different sheets. So let's start, I'll copy the formula, I'll deep dive into the formula by pressing F2, copy the formula here and paste it here. It gives me main menu, which of course is not something I want. I want to go to the PNL sheet. So instead of referencing cell A1 over here, I'll still reference maybe cell A1, but I'll refer the uh, profit sheet. Now it's profit. It was PNL before. I'll do the same. I'll freeze the reference to A1, and then I'll copy this formula, or maybe I can just drag it down as well. Now instead of profit over here, I can write balance sheet. If you want, you can also link them individually, whichever way you like. You can actually go into the formula. And link it to, let's say, cash flow. Or if you want to follow, follow my approach, then I'll just like to type in manually. So now we have names of all the sheets set up in a dynamic way. Let's first check out if our links are still working. They are working. Let me check out this one as well. It's also working. Now let's check out that if I change the name of the sheet, then whether the link works or not. So instead of earnings report, let me just call it, I don't know, uh, some report, whatever. Let's just check it out and it's working. 
So now let's quickly tackle the last topic that we had to work on. That was the formatting of the links. So let's go back to the main page. Um, I'll just uh, rework these formulas. So as you can see, when we create a link, by default, it gets created as a blue link. This is because uh, the default formatting of hyperlink is uh, is in a blue font, and once the hyperlink is followed, it is uh, it turns uh, slightly reddish. So of course, if you're happy with this formatting, of course that's great. However, if you want to change it, then uh, there is an option to do that as well. Of course, now one option is to go and manually change the formatting by selecting the formatting options in the ribbon. Um, however, that will not be the best way because anytime you add a new hyperlink, you'll need to do that formatting again. So how can we universally change the formatting of the hyperlink? You'll go to any hyperlink and you'll see in the styles menu, there will be a hyperlink option. So this is the hyperlink formatting for links that have not been visited. You'll right click on it, modify it, click on the format, and then select any color that you like. Let's say I'll go for it with a maybe red one. Let's try this one out. Click on OK. So these links have not been visited. And for the links that have been visited, I want to select, let's say, maybe yellow so that it's visible. OK, now let's try it out. So this link is red, which means it has not been visited. And once it's visited, then it will turn yellow. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It was actually a long one. I hope you learned from it and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.